Hey, everybody. This is Chris. And Kathy. We wanted to take a minute to thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate every listener and are grateful for this platform. Please help us share our vision by subscribing to our show through your favorite streaming app. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Petability Podcast. You can also support the show by making a donation. Simply go to our show notes and click the link at the bottom of the page of any episode. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Petability. I'm your host, Kathy Simons. And I'm your host, Chris Cranston. Our podcast provides interviews and information to help your pets live their best lives. Hey, Chris. Good morning. Hi, Kathy. How are you? I'm doing all right. How's it going on your end? It's going well, although I wasn't paying real close attention to my dogs this morning while I was having my coffee and reading the paper. And I could kind of hear something, but I chose to ignore it. <laughs> and when I looked up, the entire living room was filled with the fuzzies from inside a toy. Oh, it's a murder scene. It yeah. was. It was. It was the the beloved hedgehog. Yeah. And fortunately, my dogs don't eat the stuffing, but it I always find it amazing like how much fiber fill comes <laughs> out of one little toy. Yeah. And, and then I was thinking, well, if if you know maybe I had had something from a dog's best life box that wouldn't be so easily destroyed right that right. that wouldn't have happened so and there's multiple things in the box so if something you know if they did destroy something unlikely but if they did there's still more stuff in the box <laughs> exactly exactly and i tend to have those items you know that, that come in the box kind of coveted right i, I keep right. them in the in the pantry and we bring them out for special times you know focusing right. on enrichment right and right. uh yeah and again just Mentioning that it is such a great value because if you get the monthly fulfillment kit, it costs 45 bucks. You might think, oh, I'm kind of expensive, but it's a $75 value. I know. And right? then, yeah. And then the quarterly box, get this, Kathy, $155 value for $85. Right. Plus you can't beat that. You can't no. beat that. You yeah. And again, it's handpicked quality stuff. So, right. Right. And if you, if you want to get a subscription box from a dog's best life box.com and you use our promo code pet pod 22 P E T P O D 22, all capital letters, you're going to get a 10% discount on your first order. Yep. 10% off and a scout and about compact training pouch. That's nice. waterproof clips on and has a squeaker. I have it. I use it for my nose work classes. That's great. Awesome. <laughs> So, so anyway, Chris, um, I, I have to tell you about how excited I am about uh, today's guest. I was watching television the other day, so I'm just flipping through the channels, you know, um, and I come across the Bissell commercial, which I'm not paying that much attention to until I see in the commercial that there's a two-legged dog in a front-end wheelchair. I was blown away. I, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe that I was seeing this. And you contacted um, me immediately. You're immediately. like, oh my God, you have to see this. Immediately. I contacted everybody I knew. You're, you're not going to believe this. Um, you know, because rarely do we see dogs in wheelchairs represented on television, right? You don't, you just don't see it very often. And very rarely do you see a dog that has a front end wheelchair that's represented right. um, on television. And I remember thinking, you know what? Good for you, Bissell. Kudos. Because the more the public sees dogs in wheelchairs or animals in general with any type of disability. You know, your three-legged dogs, a dog with one eye. This morning I saw a commercial with a German Shepherd with three legs. Um, and I thought, this is great. It, it helps to draw attention to this population of animals. You know, essentially we're sort of, you know, normalizing these dogs with, with wheelchairs and, and amputations and one eye. And it gets people familiar with handicapped animals, you know. Oh. Um, yep. and, and seeing them thrive is is really important uh, because these animals are out there. And I love following Austin, this this dog, Austin Rue, because it's such a positive message. You know, and I think that, again, I think that that oftentimes these dogs that have sensory or physical impairments are, are overlooked. 
And um, how great is it that this family shared their dog with us, right? And shared it, shared them with the world. And guess the people talking about dogs in wheelchairs. How great is that? It's very great. I know. Very great. I know. So I won't delay this any longer, Chris. <laughs> Um, because I'm really excited to hear from um, our guest today, uh, Ed Cisco, and he is the owner of Austin Roo. So please welcome Ed to the show. Welcome, Ed. Glad to have you. Good morning. Glad to be here. And it's not just Ed that is responsible, but his lovely wife, Kim, is also the co-owner of Austin Roo. And I saw on Instagram that she is dubbed the momager. Is that synonymous with like Austin Rue's manager, Ed? Yeah, definitely. She's the one that handles all the social media. Um, she's way more in tune with all that stuff than I am. But but she said you would be a better uh, interviewee on the podcast. So here you are. Yeah, she claims I'm the better public speaker. I disagree. <laughs> but... <laughs> Well, well, yeah. When you have a when you have a, somebody who's a star power like Austin Rue, you really got to have a team, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yep. I saw that um, on his page. It says two paws, two wheels, one loud mouth, and one huge heart. Would you say that that captures Austin Rue? I think so. And that's pretty much him to a T. <laughs> Awesome. So, Ed, tell us a little bit about his story. You know, what's the backstory? When did you get him? How did you get him? You know, all of that good stuff that our audience, I'm sure, would love to know. Yeah, sure. So, Austin's now four years old. Um, we think he's a mix between a shepherd, husky, and collie. Uh, he definitely howls like a husky, looks kind of like a collie with a little bit of shepherd in him. Um, We've had him since he was just around one year old. Um, a bit of his backstory is kind of unclear to us. Um, what is clear from the vet records and stuff that we do have that we were given uh, is that at some point early on in his life, he jumped out of a, uh, either a car, a pickup truck, a Jeep, something like that, um, down in Austin, Texas, and um, wasn't able to get the help he needed in time. Um, he was taken to be put down. And the vet tech that saw him saw the life in him and said, we can't put a dog like this down, even though he has a lot of damage to his front legs from jumping out of the car. Um, we need, just need to get him the help he needs. And so um, from what we understand, she called a lot of the different rescues across the country that um, deal with pets with disabilities or take them in and help get the help they need. Um, and the one that was able to take him was Pets with Disabilities, which is uh, located here in Maryland where we live. And so this vet tech drove uh, Austin has a three, four month old puppy all the way up to Maryland um, and handed him over to the folks, the great people over at Pets with Disabilities. Um, from there, they took him to get uh, checked out by the vets that they work with up here. Um, and it was decided that the nerve damage was a little too much um, for his front legs from that accident and that the best uh, route forward would be a double front amputation. And so um, they went along, I think, if I remember correctly, somewhere around six or eight months uh, old, he got a double front amputation. Um, and then it turns out that uh, they do an open house every year to kind of show, uh, let the public come in, see the dogs that they have and the cats and the other animals they have with disabilities, uh, walk around the barns and the houses that they're all um, hanging out in. And uh, my wife went down there with one of her girlfriends to, to kind of support them. Um, our, one of her girlfriend has a three-legged cat um, that she got from adopted from pets with disabilities. So they went down to support him. Um, and Austin was there laying in a pile of blankets, maybe three, four weeks after surgery. And um, she just kind of gravitated to him and wanted to sit and sitting down with him for the couple hours they were there. And she didn't really leave his side, just hung out with him. The dog was going home with you. That dog. <laughs> yeah. She came home. She was like, met this really cool dog, uh, really quiet, really tame, has some issues, but he's super calm, super sweet. And they're looking for someone to kind of foster him, help him out, help him get back on his feet, eventually train him how to use a wheelchair, all that kind of stuff. And so um, she wore me down to the point where I was like, okay, let's go visit him. Um, so we went and visited him along with our, we have a, a dog that we've had for nine years now, Reese, um, took him down just to see, make sure that they're all going to get along. Uh, wasn't an issue whatsoever. They took to each other right off the bat. Um, nice. And yeah, met him. First time I met him, I instantly fell in love with him. I was like, this is one of the coolest beings I've ever seen. Um, and just the perseverance and the determination and, and all of that. And so um, 
yeah, took them home for, it was right around Thanksgiving. We said, let's bring him home for Thanksgiving. Let's see if he fits in. We'll foster, temp, quote unquote, foster him. Um, we weren't sure in terms of needs. We both work full time. We live on a, in a house that has stairs and didn't know if any of those things would be impediments. So we said, let's bring him home. Let's foster him. Um, I think within the first three hours he was home, it was pretty much decided that <laughs> uh, he wasn't going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. Um, Can I just say also, we should definitely give uh, kudos to that veterinary technician. I'm so glad that she saw that spark in him. And I'm so glad that she took the initiative to uh, find a place for him to go where he could uh, have a surgery and, and find a family and thrive. So kudos to that, to that vet tech. Yeah, definitely. I don't think many people would have drove all the way from Austin, Texas to Maryland just to right, right. get a dog some help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And and it sounds like it was love at first sight for all of you. And, you know, I've heard of foster fails before, but typically not not in three hours. So I think that's that may be a record. I mean, I think I think both of us kind of knew going on the bat that the fostering was the loose term. And it was <laughs> as long as everything as long as there was no like things that we just couldn't provide um, that it was we were going to wind up adopting him, but we just wanted to, we didn't want to commit before we could make sure we. Right. Right. So you guys were, were all in emotionally, but as every person should do that is considering a new pet, you were doing your due diligence to make sure that you could provide Austin with the life that, that he deserved. And, you know, you mentioned stairs and, you know, the fact that you work and, and all of that. So, you know, again, that's terrific, you know, that you, went that extra step and really thought things over. Yeah, we had a lot of hesitations up front, especially when, at that time he had just gotten a wheelchair, so he was very uncomfortable and we didn't know how that would play out either. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of, yeah, a lot of things in the air. We just want to make sure that we were doing the right thing for him at the end of the day, regardless of what the emotions well, were. It was uncharted territory. You were learning all together. Exactly, yep. Let me ask you this, the Rue in Austin, um, <laughs> Ed. Yeah, uh, the Rue comes from, so he's, he has a wheelchair. He's not the biggest fan of his wheelchair. Um, he'd much rather be out of it and at home largely he is out of it. Um, if you send him outside, play around with his brother, he'll jump, instead of trying to w do any type of walking, he'll just jump up and down like a kangaroo. And that's kind of his way of flying across the yard, trying to catch his brother, trying to catch the cat, squirrel, whatever it might be. Amazing. <laughs> He's the epitome of determination. A hundred percent. Yeah, he's, right, right. yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about that wheelchair because, um, you know, we've actually done a couple of shows with, uh, we did an interview with Leslie Grinnell from uh, Eddie's Wheels. And then we did another show, Chris and I did separately about mobility carts um, in general. And it, it's not that often that we see, you know, dogs with front end wheelchairs, but we see them every once in a while. And oftentimes we see them with these little chihuahuas that have no front legs. They just have these little nubs. Mm -hmm. But um, can you sort of describe the process of like, how did, I know he's not a huge fan of it, but how did you acclimate him to it? And I think there's a, there's definitely a, a learning curve with the front end wheelchairs. I think that there's a balance issue sometimes and you've got to, you might fall over a few times before you get it. Absolutely. And he's still four years, three, four years later, you're still falling over every now and again. Um, it was a struggle. So we got our wheelchair from Eddie's wheels. He went up there while he was still at the rescue, got custom fitted. When we got him, he'd only had it a few days or weeks. And it, for the first month, it was literally just me pushing him in the wheelchair, one house, two houses down the sidewalk, three houses down the sidewalk. And it was probably a few weeks where it was he wouldn't walk unless you pushed him. Um, any little bump, acorn, rock, anything he saw was just immediately stopped because he knew he might flip over. Yeah. Um, it actually took one day we were walking and there just happened to be another dog a couple houses down in front of us. And it took that, like, I want to meet that dog mentality for him to actually just decide to like, okay, I'm going to do this on my own because I really want to go meet this other dog that's walking up there. And that was the first time where we actually got him to kind of go on his own. And once he was able to do that, then we could still do it. Um, but at that point, we were still very much building up his strength. And so post-surgery and all that. So we were, um, once he kind of got used to that, it was then me kind of walking with him, making sure he's not going to tip over. But then my wife pulling a wagon behind us. And at some point, you know, he just gets too tired. 
throw them in the wagon, tow the wheelchair behind us, and then work on that. And so it was probably four to six months before we he was able to kind of use it on his own, use it long scale. Now we can walk a couple miles and it's totally fine. Nice. Um, Did he have uh, physical therapy after as well? Or, or was it stuff that you guys were doing at home to, to increase his strength? It was just, yeah, it was just stuff at home to increase his strength. And, um, Good. Good. Excellent. I also see that you go hiking with with uh, Austin Rue. Can you tell us a little bit about your hiking? Yeah. So he is in a wheelchair. He's not, he's comfortable on the street and on pavement. Um, once you hit dirt or gravel or he's not, he knows because it's a front wheelchair, that there's a high chance he's going to flip as soon as he hits a rock or something. So um, our other dog Reese, we always were, go, we would always go hiking and swimming and stuff in the woods with him. And so we didn't want to remove that opportunity from Reese's life. So uh, we got a canine or some sort of, yeah, a backpack for the dog for Austin. So he, when we go hiking, um, we'll let him kind of burn some energy out, kind of walking on his two legs down the trail a little bit, and then he'll tire out. We'll throw him in the backpack and we'll keep hiking. And so I think it's useful. Hey, uh, Reese is a certainly a mountain dog and a woods dog. So he loves being in that space. And it, I think it gives Austin another area to just sniff and some stimulation to kind of different environments to kind of be uh, put into. Environmental enrichment, you know, even in the backpack, looking around the sights, the smells, uh, taking it all in. I think it's fantastic. And he's so darn cute in that backpack. <laughs> I've seen him so darn cute. <laughs> he's a head turner when you walk by and you see this oh. giant dog coming out of the, your <laughs> he backpack. Really is. He really is. Um, so I think it's great that he's able to be incorporated into that whole pack activity of walking and hiking. I think it's fantastic. And I like the idea to tire him out a little bit first. And then yeah, we originally just tried to throw him right in and he's trying to squirm out this time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Smart. It does seem like you you and Kim both have really uh, thought through many things and problem solved. You know, things that that were, you know, maybe initially like, oh, can we do this? I'm not sure. And then it became like, how do we do this? How do we make this happen versus just, you know, giving up? So I'm hearing a lot of, um, you know, thought process and experimentation and, you know, trial and error and, and such kind of ringing through what you're describing, Ed. Yeah, definitely. I think I, when we adopted him, our number one thing, with, or we had two different, two big things. One was we wanted to show people that He's just like any other dog at the end of the day. And um, the bi other big thing is we wanted to make sure that we gave him as much of the opportunities as we could that we would give Reese or any other able-bodied dog. And so it's definitely, yeah, it, we've been able, we've been trying to do everything. I think we've been able to accomplish pretty much everything um, that we would do with Reese or any other dog. We've been able to figure out some way that we can make him do it. Um, Maybe not to the full capacity, like I said, with hiking, we throw them in the backpack, but still able to go out and do it. Um, yeah, and, that's and been our goal. And back to the mobility cart, um, you know, Kathy mentioned that front wheel carts are very unique. And I think that Eddie's Wheels is is the only wheelchair company for dogs out there that engineered a front wheeled cart. And I know it was a, a big challenge for Ed Grinnell of Eddie's Wheels. Um, and he thought about it and he thought about it and he tried different things and he finally, you know, came up with with a product that that worked. Because otherwise, I I bet that it would be much more difficult if you didn't have that card if you didn't go through the process of training him for Austin Rue to participate in some of the community activities that I've seen on Instagram. Um, it allows him, you know, now you said he can go, a, a, you know, a couple miles. I've seen him at baseball games. I've seen him at, you know, breweries. I've seen, <laughs> you know, all these kinds of things. And typically he's in his cart. So I would imagine that he would tire out um, much more quickly. And, you know, if he went down on his chest, um, on the cement and things like that, he would have wounds, uh, possibly. And so, you know, the, the value of the card, I think, you know, I just want our listeners to know that there's a time and a place and, you know, that allows Austin Rue to, to utilize the card and again, fully participate in the family's activities. Yeah, definitely. Without the cart, um, yeah, we would definitely be significantly more limited in what we could do, like you said, because of either tiring out or just because of the hazards of him right, having right. to like, walk on his chest plate, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I know a lot of people, you know, do find it challenging to 
to get their their dogs, you know, to move in the cart. Um, some take right off, no mm -hmm. problem. Um, and, and others, they're very reticent. And like you said, that other dog was the, the motivator. You know, sometimes it's a special treat. Sometimes, you know, it's, you know, chasing the owners. Sometimes it's keeping up with the pack or, you know, being drawn to something that that is unique. So finding what that uh, incentive is, what that lure to get them to move forward is, can can be tough sometimes. But once you've got it, they've got it. Yep. And how do... um. How do other people respond to him when they see him out in his wheelchair or his backpack? Has he been met with, um, you know, with with uh, with kind remarks or questions or how do how do people respond? The first reaction is usually an awe or some sort of just a sound of amazement. Um, when we when we first adopted him, it would be we probably couldn't go three houses down without somebody pulling over the side of the road and asking about him. What's his backstory? What is he, how's he doing? What happened to him? All those kind of questions. So we still, we, we got to the point where we were debating printing out a little FAQ sheet for him. And, <laughs> and handing out. Um, but as the, as in the neighborhood, at least now, everybody knows him. Everybody knows where he lives, who he is. Um, but yeah, every time we go out, there's definitely some stairs. It's usually stairs of either amazement or just he's adorable. Every now and again, you get like the very just, I have no idea what's going on there kind of look. <laughs> yeah. uh, have, have you ever say that, that people have a reaction of pity? I don't think so. Cause I think you just looking at him, you know, he's determined and you know that he's enjoying his life. And so I don't, I don't, think I would so. agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on the socials that I know your, your wife is, is responsible for. I mean, he is inspirational and his messages are inspirational. Um, you know, it seems like almost weekly there is a quote um, mm -hmm. that's posted and, you know, it, it's, it's really effective. I think for, for people to relate um, when they see, you know, Austin Rue succeeding, happy, when he's dealing with this predicament, let's say, and it's always signed, we've got this. And I love it that it's not, I've got this, it's we've got this. So you guys are really putting that message out there of positivity and, and really, especially, you know, during the pandemic that we've gone through recently and still going through, um, you know, giving people just that hope. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, the pandemic was kind of what started that whole sign idea. We, when it all locked down first hit, we were like, what can we do? We can't do a whole lot, but what can we do to bring some positivity back to just our neighborhood? And so that's when I decided, let me just throw some random signs of positive messages up in our front yard since we live on a yeah. corner of a somewhat busy street in the neighborhood. And if people like it, awesome. If they don't, it makes me feel good at least. And so Oh. Uh, once we started doing that, we were like, well, if we're sharing with the neighborhood, why not share it with everybody? So that's share with the world, with. right? Um, I I enjoy those. I, I check them out every day when I'm <laughs> doing Instagram. But, um, you know, I always, uh, I think every podcast, I, I mention how I'm always interested in the emotional lives of, of animals and just watching uh, what he does and uh, what he can accomplish and just him being, you know, a dog and doing dog stuff is, it's fun and it's inspiring and it's, it's great to watch. I can feel the happiness. I can feel the joy uh, that comes from him and you can see it, um, especially when he's in his backpack, you know, the, the joy that comes from him. So um, I love the message. Thanks. Yeah. I think he, as far as I know, he just thinks he's another dog. I don't even know that he, yeah. He definitely doesn't care that he isn't like the other dogs. He's going to do whatever he can and he'll figure out how to do it no matter what. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he just is just being a dog. He's not thinking I'm a two-legged dog. He's just like, I'm a dog and I'm going to go visit that dog, mm -hmm. um, which makes me think, you know, how has he been, how has he been received by other dogs? Do other dogs sort of like, do they engage with him? Do they, I mean, they certainly, I'm sure from my opinion, they obviously see that there's some difference, um, you know, especially if he's in his wheelchair, but um, will other dogs approach him as well and be, you know, playful or? Yeah, definitely. So we'll often take him to places by us called Bark Social, which are kind of like dog parks slash bars. Um, and there's typically one of two reactions. One, some dogs kind of 
just don't even care that he's in a wheelchair and they're just like, hey, let's play. Um, yeah. And there's definitely other dogs where they'll go up to him and as soon as his wheelchair kind of moves, they get a little spooked. Um, but they'll keep coming back and they usually warm up and by the end of it, um, they'll be playing. Um, like, that's just okay. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> there's never been an aggression. So it's always nice. either been like, hey, let's do this or like, let me feel you out a little bit before... Uh, <laughs> before we commit here. Nice, nice. <laughs> I, I noticed that uh, he is also quite the, the traveler. You guys went and saw the cherry blossoms at their height in DC, and he attended the St. Ba- Patrick's Day uh, parade in full regalia. He always has, he's a snappy dresser. <laughs> yep. And and his wheelchair is always well adorned in theme um, as well, or it certainly was for the, the parade, the St. Patrick's Day parade. So I'm sure that he uh, does get a lot of attention. And I've seen, you know, in some of those uh, pictures that are just awesome, you know, but the people like in the background, right? And their reaction, like, you know, mouth agape and, you know, grinning <laughs> ear to ear, which I have been throughout this this podcast, you know, <laughs> just yeah. my jaw starting to hurt because I've been smiling <laughs> so much. Can we can we talk a little bit about how Austin Rue got to be on the Bissell commercial? How did that happen? Yeah, it's kind of an interesting story. Um, we have a friend slash photographer that uh, is a local guy who does pet portraits and stuff like that. Um, and we had been going, getting our Christmas photos or our Valentine's Day photos or whatever, birthday photos, whatever it might be. My wife's very big on getting all those kind of cutesy photos. Um, so we would go to him and he knew a trainer who did a lot of work with um, entertainment, either commercial or TV um, with dogs and getting animals involved. And I guess Bissell had reached out to her and said, we want to do a, a, a commercial with a handicapped dog. Do you know anybody? <laughs> and she had seen his photos from our, the photographer's Instagram. And I was like, I need to figure out who that person, that dog is and who those owners are. And those are the people that you need to get on there. And so she reached out to the photographer who reached out to us. And that's how we got put in contact uh, with Bissell. So it, it was like a serendipitous kind of thing, like those, uh, you know, two, three degrees of separation. And, you know, it, it just kind of was luck of the draw. But, yeah, you know, exactly. The fact that that this had happened, you know, in terms of, you know, Kim seeking out the photographer, having the photos posted, you know, I just it's amazing. It's amazing. I think a lot of people are interested in, you know, how, how do how do I get my pet on, <laughs> on TV, right? <laughs> yeah, for, for us it was pure coincidence. It wasn't mm-hmm. something we were necess- we were in no means trying to seek it out. Um, well, does he now that he's a star, a national star, because it's a <laughs> national Bissell commercial? Right. Does he have any other gigs lined up, Ed? Uh, not at the moment, no. Um, but you just wait. Yeah, I mean, fear is he might be too. He might be too recognizable. <laughs> I yeah, I hope he doesn't get a big head, or and yeah. then he's like, you know, I'll be in my trailer. <laughs> I can't. I'll be in my trailer. <laughs> so we, we talked about Reese and that Reese accepted him. You know, very early on, you have a cat too, right, Onyx? We do have a cat, Onyx. Yep. Um, and who's... and how has Onyx reacted? Uh I think Onyx could take him or leave him. Um, <laughs> like most cats. Yeah. Austin definitely sees Onyx as the play. Like, I'm going to chase you and I'm going to try to come and get you. Um, so he kind of startles him every now and again. I'm not sure he's a huge fan of that. But I think it'll, at the end of the day, at the end of the night, they're all up on the couch together cuddling. and Nice. nice. I mean, lots of cuddle pictures. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So have you, have you considered, um, have you considered having Austin, uh, be a therapy dog? Is that something you guys have thought about? Yeah, so he actually is. So um, my wife and Reese are, have been very big in pet therapy uh, since basically since we got Reese. And they've been doing visits all over through Pets with Disability, or I'm sorry, Pets on Wheels. Um, and we recently got Austin uh, certified through that for Pets on Wheels. So he can actually go out. We have gone out, um, done some things like college de-stress days around finals, um, some reading programs with kids at libraries where they're learning to read and they'll read to the dogs so we're just starting to get into that space but um it's definitely something we're going to pursue more we uh we might have to introduce you to a gentleman that we interviewed early early on when we started pet ability podcast uh dominic scudera who has uh three two-legged dogs oh wow <laughs> i know and he's so passionate about them and um i think one of them is a therapy dog is that right right chris one yeah of them- one is one is definitely a therapy dog and And Ed, what makes uh, his pack of two legs unique is that 
one of his dogs has back legs, one of his dogs <laughs> has front legs, and one of his dogs has legs on the same side of his body. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's all different uh, confirmations, if you will, and yeah. and they're all thriving. And you know, so again, getting that message out there, and and uh, you know, they can just help so many people because, like you said, it's just inspiring to see these dogs doing dog things, just being everything dog and not, not feeling sorry for themselves. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So did I also see a, I think it was a video of Austin Rue swimming. He jumped into a pool. No fear. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about that, Ed. <laughs> yeah. No fear is right. Um, <laughs> like I said, Reese is a mountain dog and we always wanted he always would love to go. We would go hiking. We'd hit a lake or hit a stream. He'd jump right in and start swimming around. So we wanted to figure out a way to make that possible for Austin. And we didn't know if, if you have no front legs, can you swim? I, we didn't know. So um, back to your point earlier about ingenuity, we kind of designed this big contraption out of PVC pipes and pool noodles and stuff to try to keep him above water when we put him in the water. Um, then we took him down to a stream one day, put him in. He clearly didn't need it. Clearly, like a life jacket was pretty much all he would need to get in there and start start swimming around. Um, the contraption we built was just too big and bulky for him. But yeah, clear that he was a water dog. He wanted to be in the water. He loved the water. And so um, now he wears a life jacket, jumps in just like any other dog would, spins around, splashes around like a maniac, um, whether that's on in a river, like you saw in the pool, he'll jump in at the end of the year by us the community pool opens up to dogs for a day just jumps right in in and out in and out in and out for hours on end uh and we even we go paddle boarding out in the chesapeake bay and so he'll we'll paddle out a little way so i'll just jump out start swimming around for 20 minutes uh like i said he doesn't doesn't know that he's not he disabled he's and he's yeah he just goes <laughs> wow. you know, chris, amazing chris this might actually be a great time to um Talk about our sponsor, Heads Up Pets Water Collar, while we're talking about Austiners swimming, because it's a great product for dogs that have amputations. It keeps their perfect. yeah, it keeps, it keeps their head and nose above the water. Yeah, it's a perfect time to to talk about Heads Up Pets Water Collars. You know, to your point, Ed, you know, you, you didn't know, and you know, so you you went to this, you know, elaborate uh, these elaborate measures to to make sure that it was safe and and comfortable and uh you know and and fortunately austin Rue is like you said a water dog but you know maybe there are dogs out there with amputations that are a little bit more reticent not as comfortable the heads up pets water collar gives them that confidence right because it keeps their head and nose above water at all times even if they're unconscious fall yes. asleep in the pool when they're lounging <laughs> so even if they have an accident so if you were boating or something and 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 there was an accident the dog became unconscious they would still float their head and nose would still be above the water right it's unique and it's something that the the life vest just doesn't offer so um yeah, yeah i think you know any dog is a great candidate for the heads up pets water collar but certainly a dog with with an amputation or the front limb amputation because we know that typically dogs use their front legs more than their back legs when they swim you know that's the the doggy paddle right so yeah, yeah yeah so visit our friends at heads up pets and 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 get your water collar ordered today and if you use our promo code pet pod 22 that's p-e-t-p-o-d 22 you'll get 10 percent off your order absolutely and their alternative website is aptly named save dogs from drowning.com so you can find them at either website um and again pet pod 22 do it summer they're is doing, upon us yeah they're doing good work out there they're doing good work those ladies so ed is there anything else you know that you would like to describe in terms of austin rue and and kind of what a typical day in the life is i mean we've we've certainly got a a picture of you know, his activities and then when he's, you know, not out and about and, and being an ambassador for other handy capable dogs, it sounds like he's very content at home lounging around when he's not chasing Onyx. Is there something else that you would uh, like to share with us? I think the biggest thing to share is just, um, like I said, when we first brought him in to foster slash adopt, we were really hesitant because we thought there'd be all these extra needs and all these considerations and accommodations we'd have to make. And 
it turned out at the end of the day that he, just like any other dog, the only thing he can't do, well, the only, the only thing we tried to dissuade him from doing is going up and down the stairs. Um, mm-hmm. We've mm-hmm. seen him on the camera go up the stairs uh, when we're not paying attention. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah. At the end of the day, that's the only thing. We just have to carry him up to bed at night, carry him back down in the morning. Other than that, he's just literally like any other dog, just like Reese eats the same, like no accommodations anywhere else. And so he, our initial concerns of this might be way too much to handle. It really wasn't. It's really next to no additional effort in our, and maybe we're unique in that. Maybe Austin's unique in that, but um, we were pleasantly surprised in how um, capable he is and how just like any other dog on the, on the street he is. Yeah. And it's a reminder for all of us too, that, you know, there, there is an owner for every pet out there, you know, um, you know, so many dogs, you know, face euthanasia and, um, but given the chance they will find their people and their people will find them. And, you know, I I just want to, for people out there that, that, uh, you know, maybe it wouldn't be your choice to have a dog with special needs, you know, don't judge others. You know, they're the, those dogs are living their best life, and it's not lesser than in in any sense. Right, and 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 I I really appreciate the fact that you share Austin Rue with the world because the more the world is exposed, the more the world sees animals that are differently abled, uh, the more it makes people uh, stop and think, um, and maybe not. Uh, turn away from that dog at the shelter that's missing a leg or a limb because they saw Austin Rue and they saw how great he was doing. And they're like, you know what? The, we don't want to overlook this dog. Um, and and exposing you know the public to dogs that have any type of disability, whether it be physical or sensory impaired, I think also uh, leads to maybe less euthanasia of these dogs and more uh, people considering the adoption of these dogs. Yeah, definitely. Don't be afraid just because they look yeah. a little look a little different. Yeah. Right. yeah. And and I also want to give kudos to to you and Kim Ed because uh you know you you did embrace this and you are getting that that message out there and um you know even though you said mm-hmm. and and it didn't end up being you know that much different and you know that that is certainly ringing through here but you know, it is a commitment and you guys have embraced that commitment. You've gone above and beyond, you know, whether it was, you know, putting that sign out for inspiration in your yard to, you know, posting on Instagram to, he has stickers. There are Austin Roo stickers, Kathy, that- Well, I need Austin Roo stickers. Yeah, I need those. Yeah, and like Amsterdam, was it, Ed, that you guys were- Yeah, we just went to Amsterdam. Um, My wife put a sticker up on outside a street uh, light pole outside of one of the famous bakeries. And a couple of days later, we got a message. Hey, we saw this in Amsterdam. We love your dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, good. this is most people wouldn't go to these links. So, um, you know, I just wanted to, to mention, you know, how great you are too. And you should feel very, very good about what you're doing and how all of you are changing this world to make it a better place. Thank you very much. And can you, uh, as we're wrapping up, Ed, can you let people know where they can find Austin Rue if they want to see his pictures, his social media? Yeah, he's on Instagram at the Austin Rue. Perfect. We'll put that in our show notes so people can follow him. Again, that's at the Austin Rue because he is the one and only <laughs> Austin <the> Rue. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to tell folks that we will have links to Eddie's Wheels, Heads Up Pets, Water Collars, the Bissell Commercial, Pets on Wheels, and other organizations as it relates to our chat here today. Wonderful. Thank you, Ed. Thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Ed. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed our show. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Petability Podcast. For more information about Kathy's books and living with blind dogs, please visit EnableYourPet.com. Thank you, and please tune in next time.